following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. The great selection of souls or psyches We are in this uh, very moment experiencing <coughs> uh, great uh, events, not only in this physical world that we can sense to our senses, but also in the superior worlds. This is uh, very important to understand the selection of the psyche since uh, the work that we are performing and that we have to perform is always related with the consciousness. In many traditions, they talk about the selection of souls that eventually will happen in order to initiate the golden age, the new system of things that uh, will come after catastrophes and many events that uh, will happen in the physical world. So many theories, beliefs, dogmas exist around this topic related with the selection of individuals that will come to inhabit a new earth, a new planet. They call it the golden age and we are going to be very specific and to explain in detail about this selection <coughs> that is going to have, uh, happen worldwide. And uh, we have to emphasize that this selection that uh, is written in many books, religious books, that many traditions, philosophies, schools are uh, preaching and waiting for has nothing to do with beliefs. Because this is precisely the point here that everybody thinks that by believing in certain doctrines or philosophies, we are going to be uh, participants of the great selection. 
But of course, we, the Gnostics, we are always uh, basing our investigations uh, in, our, in our psyche, our soul, our own experiences. We don't like to talk about beliefs. We like to experience what we talk. And since we are talking about the great selection, it's because we want to be selected. But we have to explain in which way is this great selection to occur. And for that, always we point to the tree of life. Since we always state that we live in Malkut which is the last sephirah or the last sphere of this uh, symbol called Tree of Life, in which we study the Kabbalah. Malkut means the kingdom. So, this three-dimensional world is the kingdom. Why it is called the kingdom? <coughs> because the physical earth, this chemical earth, is related with four kingdoms. The mineral kingdom, the plant kingdom, the animal kingdom, and the human kingdom. Those are the four kingdoms of Malkut, which in Sanskrit is called the will of Samsara, which we have talked uh, many times in different lectures. Every psyche, every soul, has a vehicle, a physical vehicle, in order to exist in the kingdom, in Malkut, in the will of Samsara. That vehicle, of course, is the one that we use and that we explain many times is related with nature. There are different types of souls, psyches, because we always state that any single organism, whether it is mineral, plant, animal, or human, is a trio of matter, energy, and consciousness. So we always state, any atom is a trio of matter, energy, and consciousness, or intelligence. <coughs> so, in any kingdom, when we study it from the psychological point of view, when we apply the techniques and methods that we teach here, in which we activate the consciousness, then we discover the different levels of consciousness in the different kingdoms and how the bodies adapt that consciousness to their own development. In science, according to the law of evolution, they study the natural selection of living things. The natural selection, of course, from the Gnostic point of view, we study it uh, in all the kingdoms. Because we know that natural selection is based on the consciousness. We disagree with that dogma of the present uh, science that study the dogma of evolution. We do not uh, believe in the dogma of evolution. We study the law of evolution. What is the dogma of evolution? The dogma of evolution started with Darwin, in which they uh, attribute to the law of evolution elements that uh, do not have. We study the law of evolution and we go deep into it, 
into all the kingdoms. And for that, we utilize the consciousness. Our own particular individual consciousness. Because uh, only the five senses, with the five senses, it's impossible to discover all these laws. So we, the Gnostics, we don't deny the law of evolution. We study it. But not only three-dimensionally, but uh, in all dimensions of nature. Based on the fact, I repeat, that every atom is a tree of matter, energy, and consciousness. And this uh, evolution, and this selection, or natural selection of the species, cannot happen without the activity of the consciousness, of the intelligence. When we study the physical body and its origin, we study, of course, from the present times. We begin by studying the original cell from which this body was created. So we go deep down and we discover that physically, before becoming what we are now, we were sperms in the gonads of our father. And that is a fact. That is sperm united with the oven in the womb of our mother. And from there started the evolution of this physical body that we study now. So, of course, from that point of view, we study the cell, that original primitive cell within the womb of our mother, which was, of course, the origin of our vehicle, physical vehicle that we have. And we discover that that cell was a trio of matter, energy, and consciousness, and in a development. That took, of course, as you know, nine months, more or less, in order to come out of the womb and to keep its evolution until the moment in which we are alive right now. And we know that uh, such a physical body eventually will decay, devolve, become old, and will go again into the ground and disintegrate. So we are aware that evolution and devolution are two laws that are always acting in different ways. So we also study the law of devolution. Of course, it's a very complicated uh, development of evolution and devolution in this physical world. That, uh, and we already gave many lectures related with it. But we always want to emphasize only the consciousness, because the great selection of souls or psyches is related with this uh, uh, natural selection in which uh, the survivor of the, how you call the fittest, is the main point. This uh, survivor is a psyche through its vehicles. We have to comprehend and to understand that, Gnostically speaking, uh, this uh, uh, planet Earth, the, evo the evolution of this planet started in the three-dimensional world based on three previous cosmic manifestations. And this is something that we have to comprehend and understand in order to visualize why are we living in this chaotic world and in the way that we are living. Because this is what we call the law of karma. Karma is simply cause and effect. It's like a Sanskrit word, cause and effect. So, of course, the effect of the creation or the evolution of this planet was the effect of previous evolutions. 
in previous cosmic days. And that is related not only with a physical body, but with the protoplasmic bodies. And this is something that uh, we also emphasize because when we talk about evolution and devolution, we have to go deep down into our minds. And please do not mistake the soul, the psyche, for the mind. Because the mind is one thing and the psyche is another. The mind is a vehicle that we also have, <coughs> within which we have the, we will call the emotional body or the emotional vehicle. But not only we have that uh, type of uh, vehicles, the animals have it, the plants and the minerals. Of course, we are, we will say, in the top, the peak of evolution, related with those protoplasmic bodies. The protoplasmic bodies belong to the internal dimensions. They are not physical, but internal. And the fact is that we have that internally. You cannot deny that when you think, you feel your thoughts inside of you. You don't see the thoughts floating in the air because they are not three-dimensional. Thoughts are something internal. You cannot deny that you feel emotions. And those emotions are not uh, three-dimensional, but internal. Belong to another dimension. So in our own particular individuality, we can see that within us, we have thoughts and emotions. And those uh, belong, or those elements belong to the protoplasmic bodies. We call it protoplasmic because are made of matter, but not physical. That matter is within. Theosophy and other traditions study these bodies, and they call it, for instance, the emotional body, kamarupa. Rupa means vehicle, and Kama means desire. Vehicle of desire, in other words. So, if you want to know where do you have the desires of lust, anger, pride, vanity, laziness, etc., we would say, in Sanskrit, that is a Kama Rupa, or call it emotional body. And uh, beyond this uh, body of desires, we have the mind and through that vehicle, the mind, we think. And that is, of course, the protoplasmic bodies. Through these protoplasmic bodies, we think and feel, and they are united with the physical body, without uh, being uh, mingled or confused. When we investigate the cell, the primitive cell, the primeval cell within the womb of our mother, we discover then that the physical body is being developed. But then we discover that uh, factor that we call in, in Gnosticism, genotype. This genotype is a word that means the inheritance within our genes or the elements that are the base for the development of that cell within the womb of our mother. The genotype is related with the genes. We will say that any cell is made by 46 chromosomes, the nucleus, 46 chromosomes, and two vital or ethereal chromosomes, which are difficult to find with the microscope. So in synthesis, the human cell has 48 chromosomes. Each chromosome has about 100 or more genes. 
So within those genes, uh, we will find the genotype. The genotype precisely is or are those elements that uh, act in the genes. So when we enter with our psyche, with our consciousness in meditation, within the genes of that pre uh, primeval cell, we discover that those genes move and act according to the karma or the cause and effect of the protoplasmic bodies that abide in the eternity or the fifth dimension. There in eternity is where we find the karma or the cause and effect of that particular cell within the womb of our mother. But then, how is we discover, how is this uh, primitive cell receiving the effects of those uh, uh, protoplasmic bodies to the genes? And who is that one that is administrating little by little, mathematically, in order to create that body according to those values? Of course, we had to state that that is the intelligence, the consciousness, which is beyond, beyond the protoplasmic bodies. So here we have to go into the sixth dimension. The sixth dimension is beyond the fifth, which is eternity. And the fourth is time. In other words, the consciousness prepared the vehicle in the circle of time within the womb of our mother based on the, the karma or the protoplasmic bodies which abide in the fifth dimension. But everything is directed from the sixth dimension, from our consciousness. Specifically, we will say that the consciousness is controlled by that that we call monad. Monad is a Greek word Monas, which means unity. So there is an intelligence that exists beyond time and eternity within the sixth dimension. And that is the mona, the spirit. This is why it is impossible to see or to prove the existence of the spirit in this three-dimensional world, because the spirit does not belong to this three-dimensional world. It belongs to the sixth dimension. It's beyond time and eternity. People usually experience this eternity when the body rests and leaves their physical body with their, within their protoplasmic bodies and experience that that they call dreams. Some people call it astral projection. Which is simple, an unfoldment or a projection of the protoplasmic bodies and leaving the physical body there in order to rest. It's a, a normal process in order to activate the physical body the next day. But during that time, within the physical body is resting and recuperating the energies, the protoplasmic bodies are, of course, acting within eternity. And of course, the consciousness, the psyche, is the one that is there, active, acting. Some people remember their events or their actions during the moments of when the physical body rests on the bed and they are out. They call it their dreams. Some people do not remember that. People that do not remember their dreams is because their physical body, I mean their brain, is atrophied. The cerebellum is that organ that receives all the information of all the events that we are doing, all the actions that we're doing in eternity. And from the cerebellum, 
We said the subconsciousness is related with the cerebellum. And from the cerebellum passes to the brain. And the brain, of course, is receiving all the information of our activities in the internal planes. And we call it dreams. Of course, the monad acts in the consciousness. In accordance to the karma, which is, we will say, related with the protoplasmic bodies, the new body is developed in the womb of our mother. So, we have the physical body that we have. We were born in the country that we were born, according to the law, according to cause and effect, according to those protoplasmic bodies. The protoplasmic bodies do not uh, die and they are not uh, being born in the same way that the physical body because they are submitted to other, we will say, span of time. Physical body, we know, begins in the womb of our mother, develops, evolves there, goes out, keeps its evolution, then starts evolving and goes to the ground, disintegrates. That's the span of time for the physical body. But the protoplasmic bodies belong to eternity. And they were created from the mineral kingdom. And they were evolving from the mineral kingdom into the plant kingdom, into the animal kingdom, into the human kingdom. So our protoplasmic bodies are very old. And within them, we have the inheritance from other cosmic days. So this is how we have to understand and comprehend this. Because the karma of the whole planet is acting through the protoplasmic bodies of the mineral kingdom, plant kingdom, animal kingdom, and the human kingdom. And each one of us, every single plant, every single animal, every single mineral, has those protoplasmic bodies through which the law acts according to previous causes. Before this planet Earth was physical, it was ethereal. It was abiding in the fourth dimension. Before this physical Earth was in the fourth dimension being ethereal, it was emotional, or we would say astral, molecular. It was in the astral plane. Before being in the astral plane, it was in the mental plane. And was, of course, of mental, mental matter. So the beginning of this development of this planet started in the mental plane. And then descended into the emotional plane, and then into the ethereal plane, and finally we are now into the physical plane. This is what they are called rounds. In theosophy, they call it rounds. The first round, the second round, the third round, and the fourth round. We are now in the fourth round, which is physical, chemical, earth. The book of Genesis, written by Moses, explain the beginning of this physical, chemical earth. But it doesn't explain the activity of the evolving life in the pre previous three rounds. But we know it. Because in the protoplasmic bodies, we have the inheritance of those previous forces, cause and effect. And by studying psychologically and meditating and awakening certain senses, we can go further, further into these uh, levels that we're talking here. But we have to state that. Uh, the evolution and the evolution of this planet is always organized according to the law and administrated. The law is administrated by the monads. Each one of us has its own particular spirit, its own particular monad. And there are many hierarchies among the monads, among the spirits. Some religions call those monads 
gods, divas, angels. It doesn't matter what name we call it. We can call it the intelligence. The neumenon. Before the phenomenon. Of course, in order to understand this topic, we had to discover our own particular, particular noumenon, our own particular spirit, our own particular monad, to become in contact with it. That's the main point here. Because we are the psyche. We are the soul within this vehicle and vehicles that we call it protoplasmic inside. And of course, the consciousness is related in every cell of this organism with the physical body and with the protoplasmic bodies. But unfortunately, as we explain in many lectures, people identify it with the physical body, with the, with the protoplasmic bodies. They identify with their men, mind and emotion too much, and with their physicality. Very seldom they go inside and contact the intelligence, which is acting in that body according to the law. In this physical world, there are many religions. That they say that you have to believe in God. They call it different ways. According to the tradition. Buddha, Allah, Inri, Jesus, Jehovah, Tao. Many names. But, uh, and they say that by believing in that particular divinity, you become selected and go into the golden age. But of course, they don't see that according to the natural selection, the survivor of the fittest, the one that really works in himself, is the one that will become that. If we see that in the mineral kingdom, Plant kingdom, animal kingdom, also in the human kingdom, but with a big difference. In the mineral, plant, and animal kingdom, that is mechanical. Of course, the monad, the intelligence, guides its vehicles. In this case, the physical vehicle, in order to survive in a jungle, in order to survive and to be uh, selected in order to go ahead in evolution and to create another body or better bodies uh, in order to inhabit superior kingdoms. That's mechanical. We see it. It's a study this in this day and age. But in the human kingdom <coughs> or in the level in which we are, Mechanicity no longer places in a higher level of evolution. For that, we need to activate the intelligence. We have to go to the opposite, which is God, which is the monad, which is the spirit. This is precisely what we said in Kabbalah. Malkut is exactly the negative aspect of Hesed. In the tree of life, Hesed is the spirit, the intelligence, that is connected with Bina, which is the intelligence. And the negative aspect of that is the physical body. So people are identified with the physical body, with the matter. And as I said, many religions think that just by believing in God, and the problem is that they put that spirit, that monad, outside of themselves. People think that God is a, a being that exists outside 
there in the clouds or there in the space, a lone bearded man seated on the throne of tyranny and demanding, you have to believe in me if you want to be saved and you want to be in the golden age and the new order of things in the future. We the Gnostics don't believe in that. That's why we said, we do not believe in God. But we love him. Because God is within. If we deny that intelligence in nature and the cosmos, then we are denying our own intelligence. Because in me, I experience that I have intelligence in different levels, and each one of you have their own intelligence. That is God. It has no form. It's within. And God within doesn't need to believe to be to believe in or to be believed. To be believed in. You know. If you believe in him outside or inside of you, it doesn't matter. What you need is to remember him. I say him because there is not a noun to say it or she, whatever, but has all the polarities within. Whether we are female or male is inside. Call it it if you want, or that. But that needs to be remembered. And we need to remember God. And in order to remember God... We have to understand that we are the consciousness. So we have to be here and now. This is what we always demand. That we always demand from each one of us. I demand that from me. To stay here. To feel that I am within, inside this body. To see my mind. My emotions from within. To observe it. And to know that I as a consciousness. Have to remember my being. Myself. Because I want to have integrity. In me. And that's the point here. In this selection. If we want to be selected. We have to activate the consciousness. Because a human being. Has a meaning. The word itself. Human. Hume means the spirit, the monad, the spirit. And manas means the mind. Human means the mind, the man that is directed consciously by the spirit, by the hume. That's a human being. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that but it's an individual that believes in something. This is, that's precisely the point here. Because it is necessary to remember yourself, to remember your being, in order to be selected. Because in the animal kingdom, plant kingdom or mineral kingdom, those individuals, those creatures, are always in contact with the spirit, with their own monads and they obey that sometimes when we are in the country we observe the birds and we see that in front when they are flying in the flock one is in front of them like the geese making a big noise quack, 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 and the, behind them very hard you see in a very nice order and we said, who put that in the front? And who tell them that they had to follow the one in the front? And they do that all, always. Not only the geese, but many other birds. Other animals. Who told them to do that? We will say it better. Said, who is the one that is telling that in that very moment to them? How do they guide there? This is the intelligence. It's the intelligence that they have within, which is their monad. And there are hierarchies. There are levels of intelligence there. 
Obviously, the, the geese that are dumbed had to follow the one that is more intelligent, that is in front. They had to follow, they had to obey that. And they know how to do it. But of course, they don't reason. But they are in contact as elementals, our souls are in contact with their own particular monad. And that's why they know what to do. Instinctually. Because that's the difference between the intellectual animal and the irrational animal. The animals that have no reason, they cannot reason, they use the instinct. So, instinctually they are guided by their own spirit and they know they are in contact with it. It's that spirit is, is in different levels. But those elementals or those monads obey other higher intelligences. That in many religions, many traditions, they call it angels, Buddhas, masters, gods, that direct them according to the law of karma, according to the forces of the planet. Those intelligences are also in the sixth dimension. Because everything is organized with intelligences. You cannot accept that dogma of evolution that everything is just uh, uh, automatic or casual. Hmm. There is no intelligence behind the phenomenon. If that is probably, I have to admit that I, I, I have no intelligence here. In order to organize and to give this lecture, I have to concentrate and to ask to my own particular intelligence, my own particular being, to organize my mind and then to communicate that to you. But it's not my being that you have to follow. It's not my physical body that you have to follow, the personality, but your own. You have to remember your own because you are in this selection. Great selection. And of course, as the human body devolves, because you know, in the, in, in you observe the, min, uh, the mineral kingdom, the animal kingdom, the plant kingdom, you see how they evolve and evolve. A plant, for instance, begins with a simple seed, sprouts, grow, give fruits, and eventually decay and goes to the ground. Disintegrates. That is devolution. And that happens not only with our plant, but many other plants, as well the animals. In the physical plane, you see how they evolve and devolve. Of course, the life in the mineral kingdom is very slow, but also devolves. And we can see evolution and devolution in metals. By applying, of course, the intelligence. We will see in which way are going up or going down. So, a whole humanity in this very moment, obviously, unquestionably, is devolving. Because we see how nature is now acting in all the ways. Earthquakes, hurricanes are being active more and the destruction forces of nature are more active. And it is because we, as a human beings, we are devolving. There is not evolution in the physical plane anymore. We reach the top of evolution, which was precisely the intellect. But if you observe the physical body, it's not evolving. Now, uh, people are being born with uh, uh, different organs, atrophy. And of course, many sicknesses are appearing in different uh, places, which are little by little destroying, polluting the physical body. The mind, the protoplasmic mind, 
The protoplasmic emotions that we have within are also devolving. Wars, tyranny, crimes, homosexuality, lesbianism, prostitution, pedophiles. All of that is a sign of devolution in the psyche, in the protoplasmic bodies. And that's why it is written. When you see all these signs, when the degeneration will reign in all the earth, that is a sign that the end is coming. In other words, the devolution of the planet. In order to start a new evolution, a new era. Because the whole humanity also evolves. And that evolution of that humanity is always stated in four steps. The Golden Age, the Silver Age, the Copper Age, and the Iron Age. When humanity reaches the Iron Age, then it starts to devolve, to decay. And to, in order to eventually start another Golden Age, another Spring. And of course, that is Spring, that Golden Age is what people call the new order of things that will come. And everybody thinks that it will be that will be there because they belong to this group, this religious group or this philosophical group, or because they believe in this or in that. It has nothing to do with it. Because if you want to live, for instance, as a certain uh, levels psychologically speaking you have to work on yourself so for instance drunkards live in bars in cantinas they drink alcohol and they are surrounded by all of those sicknesses related with their vice of alcohol which is of course cirrhosis and many other things Poverty that they bring because of the alcohol, etc. So each one of us has or is in different level. And we attract to us, according to our level of being, a level of consciousness, the circumstances in which we live. A prostitute, for instance, will be surrounded by prostitutes. And with the problems related with sexual diseases, venereal diseases, psychological and physical problems related with that, thieves as well. So each one of us has a different type or level of being. And we attract that to our environment. See this society, what we call humanity, is in chaos. Hatred, war, anger, why? Because this is what we have within. But we have the custom to point always the neighbor without comprehending that we belong to this humanity. And of course, we think that because we believe in this or we believe in that, we want to be selected. And those people that do not believe in what we believe will be left and be destroyed. And then we will go and float in the air and go into heaven. This is what many people think. It's not like that. You are free to believe in what you want, whatever you want. But if you want, for instance, uh, to be surrounded by angels, and then you have to have the psychological level of an angel. You go, for instance, and say, oh, well, I belong to China. And you go to China. And there are people talking Chinese you don't understand. So you don't belong to China. You belong to the United States. Speak English. Maybe you go to England. You understand. But if you want to live in China or Japan, you have to learn the language. Otherwise, you are excluded. You are not selected. The same, the same rules apply to the superior world. Do you want to be selected? 
then you have to follow the rules of those worlds which are above Malkut, which are above the kingdom. That's why Malkut, he is in the very bottom of the tree of life. Above, we find the nine heavens, or the nine spheres. Many religions talk about the nine heavens. Where they place the angels, archangels, cherubims, seraphims, thrones, divine beings above. And the demons below, of course, below Malkut. That is what in Kabbalah we call Klippoth. So, if you observe, for instance, the planet Earth, which is in the center of Klippoth and the heavens, what is what we have in this planet? The intelligence, the consciousness of this planet is related with what? With the heavens or with Malkut or with the Klippoth, with hell, with inf- people call Inferno. In other words, Inferno is a Latin word which means inferior. The inferior dimensions or the superior dimensions. We have within all those elements that make us to be in affinity with Klippoth, with hell. Anger doesn't belong to heaven, but to Klippoth. Lust doesn't belong to heaven, but to Klippoth. Pride doesn't belong to heaven, but to Klippoth. To hell, to the inferior dimensions. So we have within, observe yourself. Your own particular hell, your own particular inferno is within you. But that reflects, of course, in the infra dimensions. So in this very moment, for instance, you said, I would like to be selected for the golden age. But the golden age is an age where only those consciousness that will be in the same level will be incarnated. Consciousness, souls, that will vibrate with the gold, with the golden age. You see the gold, the metal is pure, it's solar. Gold is related with the sun. Of course, the sun is above. This is in relation with Tifereth. Tifereth means beauty in Hebrew. And that beauty is related with the consciousness. In other words, in order to belong to the golden age, you have to be beautiful. But don't uh, interpret that word beautiful as the ordinary people interpret They think that to be beautiful is to be in shape, to be thin, to have uh, maybe 10 uh, plastic surgeries after you become wrinkled, in order to be always stretched and beautiful, and to have a nice body. That is a false beauty. The beauty is eternal. It belongs to the soul. That's why it's called Tifereth in Kabbalah. To, to be beautiful means not to have anger within, not to have pride, not to have laziness, gluttony, greed, and all of those defects that we have in abundance. That's to be beautiful. When a new creature is born, the protoplasmic bodies cannot enter into that creature, into that baby, because... The baby needs to develop the personality. Is what we already explained in all the lectures. And that's why the only thing that enters into that baby is the little percentage of consciousness which is not trapped into the ego, into the protoplasmic bodies, which is just 3%. And that's why when you see a baby, a little newborn, you see how beautiful it is, how innocent. That's why everybody is in love with a new creature that is being born. It's beautiful. But what you see there in that beautiful baby is the soul. 
without protoplasmic negative forces, without ego. But of course, as the body grows and the personality is developed, that beautiful element disappears and appears the devil. And appears what we are. And then we realize that we belong to the inferior dimensions. But of course, that ugliness that we have within is psychological. And in order to belong to the golden age, we have to be beautiful. We have to clean our psyche. And that is not clean by believing in something. But by applying methods. Psychological methods in order to clean our own particular psyche. If we, we want to belong to the new system of things that will come. When the Kali Yuga appears, which is the dark age in which we are right now, then the superior intelligences start to act with a lot of strength and give to the lower intelligences elements, methods, rules, codes in order to go out from the devolving forces that is sinking the souls into Klippoth, into hell, into the inferior dimensions. And in order to give them the opportunity to be selected for the golden age and to go out of that devolving forces, both devolving forces. This knowledge, this doctrine that we are teaching now, doesn't belong to us. It's a doctrine that is eternal. It's called Gnosis. We didn't invent this. This doctrine, or this knowledge, was taught in different uh, times for the great avatars. In order to help, in this level in which we are, the human kingdom, the psychics that wants to belong to a new level, a new system of things above. And of course... When the humanity degenerates, Gnosis appears always. Call it knowledge, Nana Yoga, different names. In this day and age, we call it Gnosis. We use the Greek term for knowledge in order to teach what we are practicing. In order to tell the people, if you want to be selected, you have to work in yourself. Because the planet is now passing into a very strong transformation. Eventually, the whole physical world will be changed. Now you hear, for instance, about the global warming, about earthquakes and all of that. People are alarming, of course. That's normal. From the cosmic point of view. It's not the first time that it's happening. Neither the last. And of course, the problem is not here how to survive physically. The problem is how to survive psychologically. Because if the problem were only physical, we would say, okay, what's the big deal? Whether we receive this doctrine or not, sooner or later we will die anyhow. Everybody's going to die. But that's not the problem. The problem is in the protoplasmic bodies that do not belong to this three dimensional world, that are submitted to other laws. 
If we are not changing, if we will not change, then the protoplasmic bodies, which are already devolving, will sink into the inferior dimensions. And we will no longer have physical bodies. Because the end that we call Kali Yuga is always acting in two steps. This Kali Yuga or Iron Age, which is the last age in order to a root race to be finished, to be destroyed, this Kali Yuga started at the time of the Romans and Greeks, at the time of Jesus, a few years before how the Kali Yuga started. That's why this civilization that we name here, our present civilization, comes from that epoch. From the Greeks and Romans. Julius Caesar started the scenario for the Kali Yuga. And Jesus of Nazareth came at that time in order to start the spiritual development and to help the souls at that time. And many other great masters came. So from that time to the present time, Kali Yuga of the Iron Age is acting. But only the half of it. Because Kali Yuga acts in two, uh, two ways. Or two parts. The first part is for the physical plane. And the second part is for the protoplasmic plane. This is how you have to understand. Because we are physical and we also have protoplasmic bodies. The mind and the emotion. So physically, the whole planet will pass for a tremendous transformation. The end of the first half. Of course, earthquakes will multiply. Tsunamis. And many other catastrophes that physically will happen, in which thousands, millions of people will die physically, and eventually the poles will become equator, and the equator will become poles. This is a physical, chemical transformation of the earth, because the earth needs to start another nature, because this present nature is polluted. The water is polluted, the earth is polluted, the air is polluted. We cannot start a golden age with smog. We cannot start a golden age with the seas polluted, with the fish are dying. We cannot start a golden age with hunters killing creatures in the forest. We cannot start a golden age with homosexuals, lesbians with degenerated seed. Golden age is for clean souls, with beautiful souls, without ego. So therefore, everything will be wiped out. And we are in the middle of this. Physically, all of us, without exception, will be wiped out. But after that, without physical body, comes the other half of the Kali Yuga which will be applied to the protoplasmic battles, within which we have lust, anger, greed, pride, laziness, gluttony. And that will happen in the inferior dimension that people call hell. And that you can experience that with your consciousness. If you awake it, you will discover the inferior dimensions. Dante Alighieri described them very well in detail. Any people that have nightmares experience the inferior dimensions in a very unconscious way. But the fact is that the inferior dimensions are made in order for the protoplasmic bodies to be disintegrated and to little by little descend in a devolving way in night spheres, which are simply the opposite of the night heavens. Dante described the nine spheres of hell. Well, are infra, not physical. Because they are for the protoplasmic bodies. 
And this is how the soul will descend. And will take about a thousand years of the time of this physical plane. In order for the souls, which are regular, not too evil, not too degenerated, to be disintegrated in clear path, in the infra dimensions. When that ends, when the dis disintegration of the protoplasmic bodies happens, that's the end of the whole Kali Yuga. Then the golden age will start. And this is something that we have to comprehend. And it's not a matter of believing in this or believing in that, how we are going to be excluded of the inferior dimensions. It's a selection that we have to do. And we have to do that selection by our, by our own. To change psychologically in order not to descend into the infra dimension. But now humanity is entering in a big wages, with waves, into the infra dimensions. Everybody is applauding degeneration. To be selected, of course, to clip pot is easy. Just degenerate yourself. And then you enter easily into clip pot. Is what this humanity is doing. They are applauding homosexuality, lesbianism. That's okay. And little by little, time passes, and everybody applauds when somebody evil happens. It's okay. It's no problem. Of course, of course, no problem in clip pot. Because there, the laws of adultery, fornication, and sexual degeneration are normal. The protoplasmic body degenerated bodies enter into clip pot. By following degeneration, you are selected for clip pot. But not from heaven. In order to enter in superior spheres above Malkut, you have to regenerate your psyche. Regenerate. Mm -hmm. Meaning that you have to apply superior forces in order to generate within you the superior, superior forces within you. But for that you have to eliminate the degenerated forces that are sinking our psyche into clipas, into the inferior dimensions. And that is only possible by following the superior laws, superior rules from the superior dimensions. And who is the one that is uh, doing those laws in the superior dimensions within us? Is the monad, the being, the spirit. That's why it is written, Jesus of Nazareth says, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I mean, in heaven, in the superior dimension, the six dimensions of nature, the law of the spirit is done according to the superior forces. But in earth, it's not. We cannot say that the will of God is being done on earth as it is in heaven. Our own spirit agreeing with degeneration? No. So we have to be selected. But the selection is made in three steps. The first step is to receive the doctrine which is written in the Bible, which is written in the Quran, which is written in the Bhagavad Gita, which is written in many sacred books, but unfortunately in code. For only those that are working with their consciousness, with their intelligence, discover. Because the rules are written with intelligence. And how do we call those rules or those codes? Myths. Mythology. Myths. Within every myth is hidden certain truths or codes that only those that work with their intelligence discover and only to be selected. If those codes were very openly from the beginning and then the, the, the animal mind will abuse it. Now it is given delivery and free because we are acting out of compassion. Because there is no time to degenerate the doctrine in the physical world. Time is close and close and close. So it's our acting 
in you right now or lose it. And that's why we are talking openly. And we are unveiling many myths, many secrets. Because we know that humanity needs it. Humanity is not in the level of entering into the college of initiates and awake the consciousness first and then to discover that. There is no time for that. So the great intelligence of the superior levels are teaching that in order for us to do something. We are giving this free. Delivering the knowledge so openly that people don't realize it. And they said, I don't believe in that. Well, it doesn't matter. It's not a matter of believing. It's a matter of practicing. So that's why the first selection is for those people that receive this knowledge. Whether through a book, whether through a lecture, whether through the internet, or by talking in the street with somebody and receiving the codes and secrets that before were hidden. Just by that, if the person follows and continue, will be a selected one. The first level of selection is just to know the doctrine, to practice it. It's not to believe in it, to practice it. If you start practicing it, and you, you belong to the first, selection. During that practice you apply the three factors, the methods in order to release your consciousness, to awake your consciousness and to eliminate those animal elements that sink you into devolution, into your protoplasmic bodies, in order to eventually, if you succeed, to belong the second selection. The second selection is not somebody that will come and say, okay, you belong to this school, right? Come to me. You are now to the second selection. No, it's not, it's not here. The first selection is here, yeah. Just to listen to the, the doctrine. The second is inside. That call is from inside. Listen very careful. It's from inside. There are beings, superior beings, that are, of course, working now in this second selection. But they are only looking for those people that are working in themselves, that are changing. You need at least to annihilate the 50% of your own degeneration. Not the 50% of the degeneration of, of, of the neighbor. The neighbor is their problem. If they disintegrate that, if they want to belong or to be selected to Glipot, is their own business. The 50% in your own psyche is your own business. It's not mine. It's yours. If you meditate and you annihilate and you comprehend your own self, eventually you will be selected in the second. And this second selection is involved with great beings, which also have a physical body. And that people call extraterrestrials. Extraterrestrials from the point of view that are above the earth. And also because they live in other planets. And the level of being is not like our level of being. It's superior. Because in order to conquer the space and to travel in the space, there are laws. It is what the people of the earth ignore. They think that they can travel in the space... Because they qualify themselves as human beings. That is not like that. You have to follow certain rules. And there are rules. That you have to follow in order to travel in the space. From planet to planet. Not only psychological. But also physical. So the. Beings. That are superior. And that travel already in the space. Know very well. In the chaos. Which is planet this planet is and they want to help us but people think that because we have that psychological element of war conquering we think that they are coming on to conquer who wants to be a king of a mental hospital this is they don't think in that why an extraterrestrial will come from a superior civilization in order to be a king of a mad people 
people that are threatening to kill. I personally, if I belong to the planet, will come here to be king. Why? You know, maybe because the planet, the people of this planet think that they are superior. No. We are inferior, very inferior. Not only physically, technologically, but also psychologically. They, the extraterrestrials, the masters of other planets, intervene and help you if you are working in yourself psychologically. In the internal planes. With your physical body as well. They already came and discovered that the seed that creates human bodies in this planet is polluted. So therefore, they arrive at the conclusion that the future root race physically is impossible to create it, to be created with the seed of this planet because it's polluted. So therefore, they are doing super efforts in order to mix the seed, the sexual seed of these people of the earth with extraterrestrials in order to form a new genotype that will help help the phenotype. You see, the future root race, the golden age, will, will be a different phenotype that will inherit a genotype which will be the, me- the mixture of the seed of this planet, of the human being, with extraterrestrials. And they are already doing it. Mixing the sexual seed, etc., in order to bring that genotype or those phenotypes will be the physical bodies of new creatures in order to inhabit it in the golden age. This is a help, an extra help that this planet is receiving. Because the extraterrestrials, the superior brethren, are worried. Because they don't want this root race or, or this planet to, be dis- to disappear, the humanity to, to disappear completely because the seed is polluted. And this is something that people ignore. But they help you also psychologically in order to acquire that 50%. In order to belong to the second selection. So that that selection is also in the psyche. Of course, when the psyche is changing, that affects the, the physical body. Because as a consequence, we will have a better body. So, when we talk about the selection of souls, we are talking about the psyche. And this is something that you, you will realize. It is something that somebody will tell you, now you, are, you belong to the second selection because I saw you doing this or doing that. No. You had to see it. You had to experience it. You know, when, when I'm, for instance, in my case, when I talk about extraterrestrials, I am, because I read something, I experience that. I know they exist, but I don't want anybody to believe me. Because it doesn't matter. That is that's concerned only to me. To my own development. And I know that you can receive also help if you work in yourselves. But if you don't work, you won't realize that. You have to work. That's why you work the three factors of the revolution of the consciousness. In order to, to be selected. And to be assisted by the superior brothers of the space and of the internal planes. And then by working, and when you become selected in the sexual selection, they wait for you in order to see if you will do the super effort to annihilate the rest of the 50% of your animality in order to belong to the golden age. Because in order to be selected by, for, for the golden age, or the new system of things that come after the great catastrophe, you need to annihilate completely the 100% of your ego. You have to pass for a, a complete mutation, transformation. And you are not live alone. They also help you. Doesn't matter how long you want to take, as long as you're doing it, 
they will assist you. Whether in this planet or certain lands that will be saved for that or in other places. Because the universe is big. This is how you have to understand. So the golden age, the new system of things that all religions are preaching, the selection that will be, will be happen is not going to, to happen just because you believe in something. That is because you are going to show internally the change in your psyche. And therefore, you will be, you will be in the affinity with the environment of the golden age. Because it's precisely the survival of the fittest. And this is something inside. So that's the work. And of course, as I said, you have to follow the direction of your monad, of your own spirit. Because that is the only part which is in contact with the superior dimensions. Because if you follow theories, dogmas, beliefs here, that is just things related with the mind, which are related with clipos. When you experience that personally, I experience with my consciousness and descend consciously to the inferior dimensions, what people call inferno or hell. I go there, awake, and I talk with people. And there I found, in the first sphere, which is called limbo, People with the Bible in hand. Teaching me and telling me that they will save me. And they don't realize that they are already there. He says, how are you going to save me if you are ready? You didn't save yourself. You are warning me about things, but you didn't warn yourself. And it's because people think that by believing in something is how you want to go up. It's a transformation. And it's something that you realize. It's not what the people think. I believe in this. Eventually, when I die, I will go up. Just something that, who knows? Here, in this physical plane, you have to experience that. You have to experience those dimensions, not believe in them. In the beginning, of course, you receive the doctrine. Concepts which are beyond your mind. But we give clues, methods, keys, in order for you to practice and to activate your consciousness, in order to see that. Many of our students, when they activate, they always awake, suddenly their consciousness, but they awake here and clip off. They come to us and say, oh yeah, last night I was awakened, but I, I realized that I was not in superior world, I was in the inferior world. I was in the infra, in Klippoth, in hell. Yeah, of course. It's natural. It is because you belong there. Now you know that if you don't work in yourself after death, you will descend there. You want to go up? Well, you have to fight for it. You have to change the level of being and go up and to be selected there. It's a matter of working in yourself. It's not like being lazy and thinking, oh yeah, because I believe in this or I believe in that, I'm going there. That is the great selection of souls. It's the selection of the psyche. And in this level in which we are, mechanicity doesn't work anymore. We have to use willpower. That's why with the Gnostics we say our motto is telema, willpower. All the time we have to remember the being and learn to attract from the being the superior forces. Not to believe in God, to remember God. From moment to moment, from second after second, in order for those forces that belong to it, our own particular individual, God or spirit, or whatever you want to name it, to come down and to guide you. And this is how you understand that Elohim means gods and goddesses. God is not one. It's many inside. Each one has his own. Some particular part of the whole thing. And of course, we rather like to call it intelligence. Because that is intelligence. It's called Bina. The superior aspect of the tree of life. 
that we have to activate. And in many lectures we teach how this Bina, this intelligence, is related with your physical body and with your internal protoplasmic bodies. So the Great Selection started already and Malkut, the Kingdom, is a filter which will take us to the inferior dimensions or to the superior dimensions. All depends on us. And remember that filter is your physical body. Your physical body is the vehicle that nature gives you as a gift. And all depends how you use it. That's all the energies, all the elements that you need in order to do this. Because it will be unfair to tell you that you have to do it. It will say, well, where are the tools? Where are the keys? Well, all of them are in your body. You have them. Problem is that you are not uh, uh, in, interested in d knowing this. And that's why you were just identified with the physical world. And uh, despising the clues, the keys that everybody has within. Now we teach you, we guide you, and we tell you, this is the key. Here is, is within you. Do it. Awake. Active. Your consciousness. Remember your being. Not believe in your being. Remember. In order to remember you have to stay here. The omnipresence of your being is here and now. Do you have questions? So called the loss of nature, how, how we take advantage of the loss of nature in order to transcend them is what your question is? How the law of nature take, us in, take advantage of us in the state of degeneration that we are? Well, the thing is this nature in this Malkut, the kingdom, give us the physical body for free, we don't pay for it. The protoplasmic bodies that we have, where we have the mind and the emotions, are also free. Nature gave us that since we were minerals. And evolved with those uh, bodies, the plant kingdom, animal kingdom, and we have them right now. It's where we have the intellect. That's a gift. Right. So we have to take advantage of that. When, when the monad receives a vehicle with intellect, immediately start working the consciousness, in order to jump into another level. The problem is that the consciousness, when is inheriting a body with intellect, identify with the intellect and think that he's already a human being. He's already developed. Without understanding and comprehending that eventually the internal protoplasmic bodies and physical body will devolve. So nature take advantage of that. Because nature needs, listen carefully, needs your protoplasmic bodies in order to give solid consistency in the interior of the earth. You see, the interior of the earth, the planet, needs very higher, lower vibrations in order to make it strong. And in order to receive those vibrations, the planet needs, nature needs, the protoplasmic bodies in devolution. So the devolving protoplasmic body channel lunar forces that give solid consistency to the planet. So therefore the protoplasmic bodies are necessary not only in the surface of the planet in the law of evolution but also are necessary for the devolution. So therefore nature doesn't care about your beliefs or your practices in your consciousness, nature knows that your physical body belongs to it. You will die and that will go to the ground and will continue the process, whether you believe in wh whatever you believe. The same with the protoplasmic bodies. Nature will take it down. Whether you believe in this or you believe in that. So nature is taking advantage of your own vehicles that she gave you as a gift. 
So you have to work with a great revolution. That's why it's called the revolution of the consciousness. In which you revolt against your own nature. You see? Because the laws that we are talking here, evolution and devolution, that act mechanically and that destroy the soul, are within you. Not outside. It's, it's, you have it in your physical body. You have it in your blood. In the very bar, uh, marrow of your bones. That is the loss. And you have to fight against that. But if you allow those laws to work in a devolving way through you, then you are selected by nature to go into the inferior dimensions. Just by following the generation is the way. That's called the broad way that takes us to destruction. There, there, there. Phenotype is the is the outcome of the genotype. The genotype we have the inheritance, and according to the development in the environment that we receive in the physical body when we survive in this n nature, and then the outcome is a phenotype, which is a, a species that uh, is uh, of course selected in the struggle. And that phenotype give into their offspring another type of genotype. Right? The genotype changes according to the activities of the phenotype. The phenotype, for instance, the characteristic that I have right now in my physical body, in my mind, in my emotions, in my personality, that's my phenotype. And I have, and I will transmit that through my genotype. That eventually will create another phenotype. That's the natural selection of nature, mechanically. But in our way, of course, we want to create another type of being, a superhuman being, by transforming the genotype. That's why the, the Gnostic work goes directly into the sex. We start teaching the sex how to transmute it, how to transform the degeneration that we have already in order to transform the genotype that eventually will give a different phenotype. But that is for revolution, not mechanically. Because if we said, if we follow the mechanicity of nature, many people are already degenerating the genotype. Phenotypes that agree with sexual degeneration. You see, for instance, what do you obtain in your genes, in your sex? Because the sexual organ transmits and gives energies. So when you connect your sexual organs with another conduct, another, how you call another ways, because the normal is that the phallus with the vagina, that's the normal thing. But when the phallus enter into the anus, takes vibrations of the excrement that alter the genotype, and as a consequence, the phenotype, and sicknesses appear in the physical world. So that is the generation. Of course, the way that we teach is how to alter the genotype in order to create a phenotype, different. I don't know if it's understandable. I don't want to go deep in this because it's not related with this. But that is the terms here, genotype in relation with the genes, with the sex. And phenotype is your own constitution, which is the outcome of it. Phenomenon, yeah. Yeah? Well, when the, according to evolution, the essence, the consciousness, entering into the humanoid kingdom, it receives 108 opportunities. In other words, 108 physical bodies with intellect. Because before entering into the humanoid kingdom, that soul was receiving uh, irrational animal bodies, according to the law of evolution. So the psyche, of course, was acting in the irrational animal kingdom through instinct now receives the intellect, which is this level in which we are, and when that soul receives intellect, is why we call it intellectual animal. Because in Latin, animal comes from anima, which means soul. The, in, the soul becomes intellect, becomes the soul acts through a body with intellect. 
And they receive 108 opportunities. Mathematically, according to the superior laws. In order to do what you have to do, to go into another level, or to go and follow the laws of nature. If you follow the laws of nature, the devolution, then you sink into the infra dimensions. If you revolt against those laws, against your own psych, uh, your own mind, whatever, and you work as we are teaching here, and then you go up and you create another type of genotype and phenotype, phenotype. And of course, 108 opportunities. Is it negotiable? Is it negotiable? Everything is possible when you start doing it. It doesn't matter if you are in a 108 life. If you start doing your work, you receive more bodies with intellect and learn to keep your work. If you don't do the work, and then you no longer receive bodies with intellect, but bodies without intellect that we call irrational animals. That's why in many traditions they said that the monkey, the pig, and many other animals are devolving animals that comes from, from the humanoid kingdom. Yeah? Limbo. The question is, what about limbo? Does doesn't uh, real, uh, does it belong? This, right? The question is, does limbo belong to the three-dimensional world as well, as well as the inferior? Well, we will say this. The lunar astral plane, yeah, is what we call limbo. Lunar because limbo belongs to the moon, the mechanicity of the moon, mechanical laws of nature. And of course, it's the lower dimension, the astral dimension, because is the inferior astral dimension. You can experience that with nightmares. So limbo is that first sphere of the infra dimensions related with 96 laws, mechanical laws, and that vibrates with the protoplasmic bodies, the mind and the emotions, and degenerated state, or degenerate state. So, when people, usually in this day and age, vibrate with limbo. Because if you, if you see, for instance, it is rare to find now, even Tibet is invaded by, by the ores of people that are related with limbo. They fight against religion, against Buddhism. Why? Because the laws of Klipoth are not related with the superior laws, Buddhism, Christianity, Judaism. In Klipoth, people are atheists. Some of them worship atheism. So therefore, there is a not a single place in this planet Earth where we don't find the vibrations of limbo vibrating. Because we agree with degeneration. You just put the TV or hear the radio and everybody is applauding this generation and accepting it. And it says, if you don't accept it, you are a prejudice. Right? And they qualify you as a fear. How do you call it? With homosexuality, it's homophobic. Which means to be afraid of men. Because homo means man. And phobos, fear. Fear of men. I am not afraid of men. Neither of alcohol. But if they ask me if alcoholism is good, I said, no, it's just negative. It's degeneration. The same with homosexuality and lesbianism. But it doesn't mean that I am pointing somebody. If somebody likes that, well, it's their business, not mine. But if they ask me if I think that is good, no. It's completely bad. It belongs to Klipoth. Right? If you want to be selected to Klipoth, well, it's your own business. But... I don't want to be selected to clip off. I want to be selected to the superior dimensions. That's why I'm working with this revolution in my consciousness. And inviting those that want to enter in the revolution to do it as well. But there is always freedom. Nobody is going to force you to do it. So of course, clip off, limbo, is vibrating now in the three-dimensional world. Even though we belong to this three-dimensional world, but 
if you observe, the laws of adultery and fornication are accepted now in this two-dimensional world. There are few people that are against it. That means the limbo is already vibrating. The, the laws of the protoplasmic bodies are already conquering the earth. We are really in a havoc. Yes? Well, that's according to karma, you know. The, the evolution is according to karma. Those that started creating the solar bodies and eventually they decide to go down, well, the law punished them severely. Because those who do evil with consciousness, is, is there, uh, the laws are severe, you know what I mean? In every level, the laws are strong. But there is always a way, of course, of compassion, even in those inferior spheres. If you start changing, they help you. But that, that depends on you. So those people with solar bodies, they stay more time there, because the solar bodies doesn't belong to nature. And only to disintegrate those bodies, take takes time, long time. <coughs> so I don't advise you if you create solar bodies to go down there. Because it will pass eternities there. Yeah? What about, what about those who say that if we just wait, eventually everyone will go back to the natural people? The, 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 the question is that some people think that if you just wait Eventually, we will be there. That we will enter into heaven sooner or later. We will say that that is true. You don't need to do anything in order to return to heaven. That is true. But before you have to pass through hell. Because, of course, hell is, or inferno is not what, as the Catholic Church believes and many other religions, that is eternal. That, those infra dimensions are in eternity, yes. In the dimension are called eternity. But eternity has a beginning and an end as well. It depends. People that enter there are, are, are disintegrated in about a thousand years. That people will be there forever and ever? No, that, that's stupid. They need to pass through a, a, a time of purification, we will say. In other words, if you don't disintegrate your ego, if you don't do the revolution of the consciousness here in order to go up, eventually nature will destroy that for you in the infra dimensions. That's why the infra dimensions exist, in order for nature to destroy that. And when you completely are clean, your consciousness becomes clean in hell, and then is released and returned to the monad. But as a failure. So as we will say, Everybody will be there, but not everybody will become. Do you understand that? To become is to awake, to develop consciousness as a Buddha, an illuminated one. For that you have to fight, you have to work, and to do the work inside of you, and then you return to the same source, but as a triumph person, as a conqueror, an illuminated one, a Buddha, this is called in, in Sanskrit, a Buddha, an illuminated one. But if you don't do it, then nature will be doing it for you and eventually you return, but a failure. You will return there and you will be like an ant in comparison with a human being. To stay in this cosmos, to be, to, to be alive, to exist, in order to return, in order to suffer a lot, and to return as a failure, it really it does, it doesn't make any sense. For me, of course, I had to fight for it. I don't want to return as a failure. It's easy to be a failure. You just follow the laws of nature, and you disintegrate, you return, yeah, but you don't even know if you return. You will be there, but you will know.
they have lunar mental body. All of them have lunar mental body, but without intellect. Oh, the question is, uh, do the plants and minerals have uh, a mental body? Because people think that uh, mental body is only intellect. The mental body exists in the mineral kingdom, in the plant kingdom, in the animal kingdom, but they don't have intellect. We are the ones that develop intellect. That's why I said that's the top of evolution. The same mental body that we have, the animals have, but not so evolved. The same mental body that the animals have, the plants have, but not so evolved. The same mental body that the plants have, the minerals have, but not so evolved. You see, they're evolving little by little in order to reach this level in which we are. There are many ex experiments that scientists are, uh, sci scientists are doing with plants and minerals in order to discover that there is some intelligence there. You know, there is intelligence there, but not at the same level that we are. Of course, above us, there are more intelligence, higher levels of intelligences. But we are not going to enter there automatically or mechanically. No, we have to do the effort. We have to use willpower in order to enter there. If you don't do anything, if you just go to your home and turn on the TV and watch your soap opera or, or football or baseball, whatever, and after that to the bar and drink some beers, whatever, and or well, the party, enjoy and eat uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, uh, McDonald's, whatever, you will never go there. You need to work on yourself. If you like, do, if you you like to do that, do it, but consciously. Work on yourself. Remember yourself. Personally, I don't like McDonald's, between parentheses, or in quotation. You have to select your food. Do you have another question? Well, this is not the end, unfortunately. It comes more. But let me tell you, I invite you to practice in order to experience what we say here. Because most of the things that I was telling you, I experience. And I have faith, because I am touching and seeing things. And I would like you to do the same thing. Here, we are not trying to convince skeptical people. So that's a waste of time. If the skeptical wants to, to prove things, let him or let her experience by himself, herself, in his, her own flesh, psyche, etc., then we'll prove. Thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Glorian Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah, Lord,